morning dear students of second secondary Thebes school Maadi. Uh, today we are having drama the play you are having this term is or this year is Pygmalion uh, by uh, John Bernard Shaw Bernard Shaw is a great playwright uh, he's from Ireland by the way the title Pygmalion refers to a sculptor, someone who carves statue. By the way, this is a Greek mythology. Uh, it tells about someone, a great sculptor called Pygmalion, and he was a king too. Pygmalion was a women hater. He hated women. But it happened that he once carved a statue of a beautiful woman. And Pygmalion went to the goddess of beauty, uh, Aphrodite, to ask her to add more beauty to his statue. And he went to the other gods and goddesses and asked them to give life to the statue. So the statue became a real woman. Uh, he fell in love with this woman and called her Galatea. He married her. Uh, and, but it happened that his love for her declined. Maybe because she was doing the housework and so on. So his creation this woman should be ideal. She was not as ideal as he expected. So he went to the goddesses again and asked them to take life out of here. So the woman was petrified. She be turned into a rock again. And he smashed this statue. By the way, the title has nothing to do with the play itself. The title Pygmalion has nothing to do with the play itself because Pygmalion is not a character in the play. But Bernard Shaw was in fact a genius. He used this title, he used this myth of Pygmalion uh, because his play tells about a, a phonetician, someone who is expert on uh, phonetics. This phonetician earned money by teaching people how to speak English properly because it was a time of something like the Industrial Revolution. Uh, many people uh, up, we're upstarts, they were poor, but they became businessmen, but still they have their poor culture. So they went to phoneticians like, like uh, Professor Higgins, the hero in the play, to teach them the etiquette, to teach them the good culture, so that they could change into the upper class. Higgins had a friend who was Professor Pickering. Uh, they met with other bystanders under the church portico of St. Paul. Uh, and there he was taking notes. All people were taking shelter under the church portico from the rain because it, there was a downpour. It was raining heavily. While he was there, he was taking notes. He was taking notes of people's way of speech. And one of whom was Eliza. Eliza was a poor flower girl who was selling flowers. Everyone mistook uh, Professor Higgins for 
a police detective because they, they thought he was taking notes uh, about the, the, the poor flower girl Eliza, so asked to arrest her for being a beggar. And the girl began to defend herself, saying that she was doing nothing wrong, she was respectable and so on. Uh, uh, some of the bystanders were a mother, her name was not mentioned, by the way, in Act 1. This mother was Miss, uh, Mrs. Innsport, her daughter Clara, and her son Freddy. And as I told you before, one of the bystanders was uh, Pickering, Colonel Pickering. Everyone was against Professor Higgins for being a police cop or a police detective who has come to arrest Eliza. Everyone was sympathetic with Eliza. They sympathized with her. And everyone defended her. And uh, Professor Higgins, through people's speech, through their dialect, through their accent, he could tell each of the bystanders where he was from. He could exactly locate him or her. He could even tell each of them from which street he is. So people got amazed. So people criticism against Professor Higgins changed into admiration. Uh, here it happened that Higgins met uh, Professor uh, Colonel Pickering and it was a coincidence because Professor Higgins intended to travel to India to meet Colonel Pickering, who had come to England to see him, to discuss something about their profession, about phonetics. Uh, then uh, Professor Higgins told uh, Pickering that he could change this poor flower girl whose English was horrible. She spoke the Cockney, a dialect in England, uh, for the poor people, spoken by the poor people. He said that he could have a challenge to change this flower girl into a lady, into a duchess. And he could even uh, attend the ambassador's garden party. Uh, this was an event in which the elite of the society went there. And no one could recognize here as a poor flower girl. He said he could do this in six months' time. A colonel said this was impossible, so they had a kind of bet. If Professor Higgins succeeded, uh, Colonel Pickering could pay the whole costs of the experiment. Then they left. Uh, actually, Eliza was overhearing them. She became enthusiastic. She became eager. She wanted to become a lady instead of being a poor flower girl. So the first step, she could overhear them and she knew where exactly uh, Professor Higgins li lived in London. Uh, Eliza became, as I told you, full, full of enthusiasm. She wanted to be a lady. So, Eliza, uh, the first step she took towards being a lazy, a lady, she took a taxi, which was something uncommon, something for the rich, was only done by the rich. She took a taxi and went home. Professor Higgins and Colonel Pickering went, to, uh, went home to Higgins' house. The next day, Eliza arrived, and she said she could pay Professor Higgins. Professor Higgins, of course, was against her for being poor and vulgar. But he accepted the, the challenge and agreed to do the experiment with Eliza, on Eliza. Now, and began to give her uh, sessions or lessons on phonetics how to speak properly, 
how to, to be more etiquette and so on. Uh, here, we, uh, through these sessions, we see that Professor Higgins was very aggressive towards Eliza. He was violent. He never dealt with her with respect. And this annoyed the housewife of Professor Higgins, who was called Mrs. Uh, uh, the, his housekeeper. And this, uh, and this also annoyed uh, Colonel Pickering, who was more gentle towards Eliza. Then we find that Eliza's father has come. He wanted to blackmail uh, Professor Higgins. He wanted to have money for leaving his daughter there. Something, of course, very strange. Uh, and uh, by the way, his name was Mr. Doolitt Doolittle. He looked like a bustman, someone who collects rubbish. His name was Doolittle. So Eliza was Eliza Doolittle. And by the way, Eliza warned Professor Higgins uh, about her father. She told him not to, he, not to pay him any money. The man wanted only five pounds. Professor Higgins uh, wanted to give him 10 pounds, but strangely enough, Doolittle wanted only five pounds. He, wanted, he, he used the money for drinking and so on. Uh, this was in, uh, in Act One, and then, okay, let's see the questions on Act One here. Now slide two. In slide two, we have questions. What does show do for realism to prevail over the scenes of the play? Uh, actually, Bernard Shaw wanted to look more realistic. He, he followed a certain technique to become rea to, so that his work of art, that is the play, would look realistic. For example, he insisted on the fact that a cab, a taxi, should appear on the stage. This was a touch of realism. Also, the characters uh, appeared unnamed. So we didn't know the name, by the way, Higgins or, or uh, Colonel Pickering and so on. We only knew that in Act Two. So in Act One, all the characters were introduced unnamed. This could be related to realism, so that uh, any of the characters could apply to any of us. Also, places, names of places like St. Paul Church and London and so on are stated. All these add to the uh, technique of realism which Bernard Shaw, the dramatist, wanted to uh, reach. Now, look at slide number three. In slide number three, the crowd's hostility to Higgins changes into admiration and amusement, explain. Hostility is something like, like hatred. Everyone hated uh, Bernard Shaw. Everyone was against him. Uh, everyone was sympathetic with Eliza. So they were against Higgins because they mistook him for a policeman. But once uh, Professor Higgins began to show his uh, skill, his great skill, uh, his expertise on uh, his art, which is phonetics, everyone admired him. Because you can imagine this, you are standing in a place once you speak, one tell you, you live in El Maadi, for example. You live in El Masi Street, and so on. So he began to de do this with people. So people's hostility changed into admiration. Of course, you can read the details. Now, in slide number four. In slide number four, we have coincidence. Coincidence plays a significant role in the play. In fact, there, were, there was 
coincidence, which is chance, uh, played a great role here. We saw that the rain itself, the downpour, the heavy rain, was a coincidence to gather the, the main characters of the play in one place under the church portico. Uh, the meeting between Professor Higgins and Colonel Pickering, their meeting was a coincidence because uh, Colonel Pickering has come from India to England to meet Professor Higgins and they met, they met in the same spot by accident, by coincidence. Also, Professor himself wanted to travel to India to discuss a book written by Colonel Pickering, and it happened that they meet. Uh, the meeting of Eliza with Higgins. So, in fact, coincidence uh, plays a, a, a role here. Also, do little, by the way, he comes into a fortune, he became rich by chance, because there was an American millionaire who uh, wanted someone who belonged to the poor class, and this man must, uh, this man must belong to the poor class. So he, uh, Professor Higgins suggested Doolittle's name, who went to give lectures in his organization there, in his society in America and he became very rich. But this will be shown in Act 3. Now, look at slide number 5. Slide number 5. Illustrate the significance of the title of the play. We already discussed it, Pygmalion, who was a sculptor, he carved the statue, and so on. We have just discussed this in the introduction. Now with slide number six, one of the features of the absurd theater is the meaningless dialogue. How does this apply to Pygmalion? Absurd. The word absurd, when I say it's absurd, it's nonsense, it's illogic. Uh, and by the way, uh, during the 20th century, dramatists and men of letters use this technique, which is absurd. Like what, for example, two people are talking together, a man, a husband and a wife, for example, they are discussing a certain issue. So the, the husband says, it's hot today. The wife answers, I must cook now. The husband, I'll buy a suit. I need to buy a suit, the wife, uh, I'll clean the room, and so on. So there is a lack of communication. There's no communication between the characters. And this technique is called absurd. By the way, Professor, uh, the, this style or this technique was used during the discussion while Eliza was defending herself. People were talking about something else people admired uh, Higgins. And she says she is innocent, she's a respectable girl. And the others speak in another topic. So here, this, this is called absurd, a lack of communication. Now, in slide number seven, here we have quotations. The first quotation is, I'm a respectable girl, so help me. I never spoke to him except to ask him to buy a flower of me. Of course, you know that the speaker here is Eliza. She says she is a respectable girl. She never did anything wrong. She just sell flowers. She's not a beggar. So she shouldn't be arrested because everyone mistook Professor Higgins for a policeman. Uh, I never spoke to him. So here it shows that the addressed person, the addressee, is not Higgins, it is Colonel Pickering. So the speaker is Eliza to uh, Professor, to Colonel Pickering. She was defending herself 
she said she is a respect, she was a respectable girl, she never did anything wrong, and so on. In slide number eight, another quotation, you see this creature with curbstone English, you see this creature with her curbstone English, curbstone, by the way, are the blocks put at, at the pavement, for making a pavement. So, Professor Higgins here is criticizing Eliza. The English that will keep her in the gutter, in the sewage, in the wastewater, to the end of her life. Here, uh, Higgins says that English is a great language. English is a language of Shakespeare, of Milton, and so on. But such creatures like Eliza is distorting this language, is disfiguring it. Is, uh, her English was horrible, was very bad. So Professor Higgins here was criticizing Eliza uh, for her bad English. Uh, he was, of course, speaking to his uh, friend, Colonel Pickering. Now, number nine, Slide nine, I could pass that girl off a duchess at an ambassador's garden party. Professor Higgins says that through his great skill in his art, which is phonetics, could change Eliza into a lady, into a duchess. She could even attend the ambassador's garden party, a great event for the upper class and no one could recognize her as a poor flower girl. Uh, in number 10, slide 10, never you mind, young man, I'm going home in a taxi. This, this was the first step taken by Eliza to show her eagerness, her enthusiasm to change into a lady. She overheard Professor Higgins and Colonel Pickering, and she was full of motivation to change to the upper class, to improve her English, to improve her life. So the first step she took was taking a taxi. Uh, here she was speaking to the uh, driver. Uh, I wish you had understood this lesson uh, the, the session was about Act 1, we saw the title Pygmalion, why was he called, why was the, 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 the play called Pygmalion? We saw the main characters were Professor Higgins, Colonel Pickering, Eliza, and others. We saw the setting, which was uh, at St. Paul Church. This was the setting, the place, the time it was late during the rain. We saw some quotations. I wish you had understood it, and thank you very much.